All right, so get ready because today we're doing a deep dive on sea cucumbers. Sea cucumbers? Yeah, sea cucumbers. Now I know what you might be thinking. They're kind of cute. Sea cucumbers. Seriously. But trust me. Yeah. These creatures are way more interesting than their, shall we say, unassuming appearance might suggest. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Unassuming. Uh, they're actually fascinating because these seemingly simple creatures, you might even mistake them for like a rock or an oddly shaped plant down there, but they're actually crucial really? to the health of coral reefs. I never would guess that. Yeah, we're talking about a creature that plays a role as important as you know bees are to a flower garden, but in this case, it's a reef and, well, a sea cucumber. Okay, so paint a picture for us. Okay. What does a sea cucumber do all day? Oh, That's no. so vital. So you know how earthworms are like nature's little recycler. Yeah, yeah. Churning up the soil, making it super fertile. Right, right. Well, sea cucumbers, they do something similar on the ocean floor. Mm. They're like the earthworms of the reef, mm. except instead of dirt, they're munching on sand. Wait, hold up. Yeah. Sea cucumbers eat sand. That's right. Where? They're what's called detritivores. Detritivores. Which is a fancy way of saying they eat decaying organic matter. Okay. Found in the sand, they ingest it, digest the good stuff, and then, well, let's just say they leave behind some very clean sand. Oh, okay. Yeah. So they're cleaning the sand. They are. But how does that, I mean, how does that benefit a whole reef system? Well, it's all about this process called bioturbation, mm -hmm. and it's way, way more important than its name might suggest. Okay. This constant churning and filtering of the seafloor by sea cucumbers is like, it's like providing a breath of fresh air, literally to the reef. Wow. It oxygenates the seafloor, releases essential nutrients for other organisms, and even helps buffer the effects of ocean acidification. Mm -hmm. Without sea cucumbers, reefs would be in a lot of trouble. So are we talking like a little bit of sand each day? Like how much can these little guys really process? Get this. A single sea cucumber, specifically a reef she's called Holothuria atra, can process an average of almost 14 kilograms of sediment per year. 14 per year yeah that's like that's like if you or i ate our body weight in food every single day you're kidding every single day okay that's a lot of sand it's a lot of sand now i'm really starting to see why researchers are so interested in studying these creatures yeah. but how do you even begin to measure something like that on a reef-wide scale you can't exactly follow a sea cucumber around with a notepad can you you're right it's not exactly easy but a team of researchers, they went to Heron Island Reef in Australia. Okay. A place known for its abundance of sea cucumbers. Mm -hmm. And they used some seriously cool technology to study them. Cool tech. Spill the tea. All right. What did they use? Tiny sea cucumber trackers. Miniature scuba gear. Think bigger. <laughs> they used a clever combination of drones and satellite imagery. It's like taking a census of sea cucumbers from the sky. Drones and satellites. That's next level stuff. It is. So they're basically mapping out these sea cucumber populations from above. Exactly. What did they find? Well, just how much sand are these little guys shifting around at Heron Reef? The numbers are astounding. Okay. They estimated that sea cucumbers at Heron Reef process over 64,000 metric tons of sediment. 64,000? Per year. Wow. That's like five Eiffel Towers worth of sand. Five Eiffel Towers. Every year. Okay, my mind is officially blown. It's pretty amazing. So we're talking about a creature that looks like it should be an extra in a Star Wars movie. Right. And it's single-handedly keeping this entire ecosystem alive. Well, it's not just about one creature, right? It's mm. about the collective effort. Right. But right. this is where things get a little concerning. Okay. Remember how we talked about sea cucumbers being a delicacy in some parts of the world? Wait, people eat them? Yeah, they do. I have to admit, I'm curious. Yeah. And maybe a little grossed out. Understandable. What's the appeal? Well, apparently they have a rather bland flavor. Okay. And their appeal lies more in the texture. Mm. They often take on the flavor of whatever they're cooked with. Interesting. But I digress. Okay. The issue is this demand is leading to overfishing of sea cucumbers in many parts of the world. So fewer sea cucumbers, less bioturbation. Exactly. Are we talking about a potential ecological disaster here? It's a very real concern. Wow. Imagine those vibrant reefs you see in documentaries. Right. Teeming with life. Yeah. Now imagine them bleached and lifeless. Oh. 
starved of oxygen and nutrients. God. That's what's at stake here. Wow. This research isn't just about saving some strange looking creatures. Right. It's about protecting the delicate balance of an ecosystem that millions of people rely on. You know, it's amazing how something we might not even notice on a snorkeling trip right. can have such a huge impact yeah. on the health of the entire reef. It really makes you appreciate the interconnectedness of it all, doesn't it? Yeah. Even the smallest creatures play a crucial role. Right. And I think the more we learn about these intricate systems, right. the more we realize how much more there is to discover. This whole deep dive has really opened my eyes. Yeah. I'll never look at a sea cucumber the same way again. I doubt anyone who listens to this will either. True, true. It's a good reminder that nature is full of surprises. Yeah. And sometimes the strangest creatures. Right hold the key to understanding our planet. Absolutely. Well, on that note, a big thank you to our listeners for joining us on this deep dive into the incredible world of sea cucumbers and their impact on coral reefs. Until next time, keep exploring, keep learning. Keep learning. And remember, even the smallest creatures can make a world of difference. A world of difference.